Hello, hello, and welcome back. I am Carl Sussman, and you are listening to Insurance Hour. Thank you so much for being here, taking the time to educate yourself on insurance, find out how to save money, find out how to properly utilize the insurance that you pay for with your hard-earned dollars. Remember, you can reach out anytime. Just email questions at insurancehour.com. You can also call 559-656-0317. Someone will answer, or a voicemail certainly will, with a pretty voice. You can leave a voicemail, and I will, just like we're doing today, go over your question and answer it live on the air. Also, if you want to talk to an agent right away, just dial pound 250, use the keyword insurance, and you will get connected to an agent right away. Back to the listener questions. All right, here we go. My agent is always trying to sell me more insurance, and I have it all. I am on the do not call list. Where do I report him? Oh, that's an interesting one. All right, so your agent is trying to sell you stuff. First of all, understand that, yes, insurance agents and brokers make money by, say it with me, selling insurance. So on the one hand, yeah, you shouldn't be surprised they're trying to sell you more insurance. Also keep in mind, a little bit less cynical, if you're hearing from your insurance agent and they're offering you something, the possibility does exist that you need something else, right? It's like this. If you have a claim and you don't have coverage for something, what are you going to say? You're probably going to say, well, my agent never offered it to me. So where do you draw the line between my agent is offering it to me all the time over and over and my agent just is not offered it to me and I don't have the coverage that I need? It's a hard line to walk. As far as the do not call list, It's funny, I've actually never heard this question before. My understanding of the do not call list is that it's for businesses calling consumers, which this would be because an insurance broker is a business calling a client. But I believe that the caveat for that is that they do not have a prior relationship with. Now, since you already have insurance with your insurance agent, them calling you, I do not believe, would qualify as being a violation of the do not call list. I'd love to hear from an attorney on this, someone that specializes in it. So if you're listening and you have this specific language about how this works, please give me a call, 559-656-0317, or shoot me an email at questions at insurancehour.com. I would love to get the actual legal answer to this. However, I would suggest, and again, not an attorney, that because you have the existing relationship with the business, I don't think they're bound by the restrictions of the national do not call list. Speaking of which, if you are a, if you do put your numbers on the do not call list, remember, it doesn't stay there forever. It falls off. I believe it stays there for hmm, six months or a year, and you have to put it on again. So I know I've had this experience myself. I had myself on the do not call list, and then all of a sudden I'm getting all these calls. I was getting really aggravated, and I checked on the do not call list, and the number was gone. And of course, you read it, and it says you have to add it on after, I forgot, it's either six months or 12 months. So if your agent's bothering you, though, I'll tell you the truth, just be honest and say, listen, I appreciate all the reach outs. I appreciate all the offers, even if you don't. Come on, make their day. But please make a note and file not to contact me to offer more policies. And they will. Believe me, they don't want to waste any time either. And they certainly don't want to piss you off. You're an existing customer. So make sure you just tell them what your expectations are. Tell them what you like. And I'm sure they'll comply. All right. You don't have to go as far as the do not call list, especially because I don't think it would uh, it would apply. OK, next question. Why is my policy only one page, but my agent says it is a whole big policy coat? <laughs> okay, this is funny. So first, it's not a policy coat. We call it a policy jacket, which I guess is a policy coat, right? Jacket, coat, okay, I'll buy that. Uh, so here's what we're talking about here. When you get your policy, you used to get it in the mail. Now, hopefully you're getting it via some electronic format, right? In like a PDF file, something along those lines. So you're saving paper. And let's face it, the USPS is not super reliable anymore. So you're, you're getting your policy electronically. And you're going to see the first one or two pages. That's called the deck sheet, the declaration page. That's going to show all of the things on the policy that are unique to you and only you. Your name, your address, your deductible, your limits of coverage, those types of things. The effective day of the policy. That's the deck page. That's what I think you're referring to here when you say it's only one page. It's it's one page, sometimes two pages. Now, the policy jacket, that is pretty thick. It could be 50, 60 pages, depending on the policy. It could be even more. 
That language is the same for everyone that's purchasing that type of insurance policy. So an insurance carrier might send you the declaration page and the policy once, and then every year that you renew, they might turn around and just send you the deck page, not the entire policy since it's unchanged. Obviously, if there is a change to it, they'll certainly let you know and they'll send you a copy of it. Now, think, since you're getting things electronically, hopefully, this probably isn't much of an issue because most of the time now, since it doesn't cost more to send a PDF with the deck sheet and the policy or just the deck sheet, you're probably going to get both. So again, if you're not getting your documents electronically, check with your carrier and see if they offer it because it's a good thing to do. And on top of it, you'll probably get the entire policy and the declaration page included each time. Sound good? All right, next one. Uh, my car is older, but my insurance cost keeps going up. I call scam. Okay, here's the interesting part. You ready? Everything's interesting to me. Do you notice? I, I need to come up with a better way to describe it, but I can't help it. I'm an insurance nerd. It is all interesting to me. Your insurance cost, your auto insurance policy is not just predicated on the cost of your vehicle. Okay. That's one part that goes into the premium that you're paying. Only one part. It's not everything. So keep in mind that yes, your car is getting older. If you were to follow the actual policy and look at the costs for each part of it, they are charging you less money as your car gets older. However, if your entire overall auto premium is going up, that just means that there's another aspect of the policy that has gone up and it's over, it's compensated even higher from the savings you have on the car costing a little bit less. You follow me? So yes, that would be a scam otherwise. If you were just insuring the vehicle, nothing else, and the cost of it kept going up every year as the value of the car went down. Remember, I'm also assuming that an older car means a less valued car. If it's a, for example, collector's vehicle, the older the car gets, it might actually be worth more and you would expect a higher premium. You see, there's always nuance to this stuff. But in, a, in general, in a vacuum, you can bet your bottom dollar that if your car is getting older and the value is going down, then the amount you're paying to insure that car is also going down. You just have to look at the rest of the policy and see what else might be impacting the overall premium. Make sense? All right, we're going to take another break. When we come back, we're going to go through some more questions and I will have some more answers. Remember, if you've missed any part of the show, you can jump online, just search for Insurance Hour. You can find us on, as a podcast. You can find us on YouTube, iHeartMedia, you name it, we are out there. And I will be back in a flash and we will go over some more listener questions. I'm Carl Sussman. This is Insurance Hour. Thanks for watching. If you found this useful, please be sure to like and subscribe for more content. And don't forget, click here to watch the next video.